Mr. Saban Shah Saab, please come on stage to chair this session uh, for uh, this opening session. Saban Shah Saab, please. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Auz billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. The National Sadr Sahab, the missionaries of the Jamaat, and the invited guests, and then the members of the general public of Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. First, my heartfelt thanks to Allah Taala for giving us this opportunity to be the part of the 27 Jalsa Salana of New Zealand and may the blessing of Allah the Exalted be with you all at this occasion. I, as the chairperson of the first session of Jalsa Salana, I would like to welcome you all and pray that Allah would help us throughout the proceeding of the Jalsa and we all will foster the concept of excellence in every degree of our ability and performance to make it successful. With these words, may I call upon Brother Anas Rahim Sahab to do the Quran Tilawat and English translation for the ses first session of Jasa Salana. Brother Anas Rahim Sahab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل عتي الله وعتي الرسول فإن تولوا فإنما عليه ما حمل وعليكم ما حملتم وإن تطيعوه تحتدوا وما على الرسول إلا البلاغ المبين وأذى الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات لا يستحلفنهم في الأرض كما استحلف الذين من قبلهم ولا يمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم ولا يبدلنهم من بعض خوفهم أمنا يعبدونني لا يشركون بشيئا ومن كفر بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الفاسقون وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وعدي الرسول لعلكم ترحمون. English translation of Surah Al Nur, chapter 24, verses 55 to 57 of the Holy Quran. Say, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. But if you turn away, then upon him is his burden, and upon you is your burden. 
and if you obey him, you will be rightly guided. And the messenger is not responsible but for the plain delivery of the message. Allah has promised to those among you who believe and do good works that he will surely make them successors in the earth, as he made successors from among those who were before them, and that he will surely establish for them their religion which he has chosen for them, and that he will surely give them in exchange security and peace after their fear. They will worship me and they will not associate anything with me. Then whoso is ungrateful after that, they will be rebellious. And observe prayer and give zakat and obey the messenger that you may be shown mercy. Jazakumullah brother Anas Rahim Sahab. Now we have Urdu poem by Brother Bashir Mubarak Khan Sahab. Can I request Brother Bashir Mubarak Khan Sahab to come on the stage, please? Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This nazm is by Masih Maud alayhi salam from Dure Samaim. Millati Ahmad ki maali ne jo dali thi bina. Milati Ahmad ki maali ne jo dali thi bina Aaj puri ho rahi hai ay azizan diya Gulshan Ahmad bana Hey, Maskan Badi Saba Gulshane Ahmad Bana. Hey, Maskan Badi Saba Jiski Tehro Kisi Sunta Hey, Bashar Gufutaria. एक समाना था कि मेरा नाम भी मस्तूर था एक समाना था कि मेरा नाम भी मस्तूर था कादियां भी थी निहार ऐसे के गोया जेरा कोई भी वाकिफ न था मुझसे ना मेरा मौत किद कोई भी वाकिफ न था मुझसे ना मेरा मौत किद लेकिन अब देखो के चर्चा किस कदर है हर किनार अब इसी गुलशन में लोगों राहतो राहतो आराम है अब इसी गुलशन में लोगों राहतो आराम है वक्त है जल्द आओ आए आवार गाने दस्त एक जमा के बाद अब आई है ये ठंडी हवा एक जमा के बाद अब आई है ये ठंडी हवा 
फिर खुदा जाने के कब आए ये दिन और ये बहार फिर खुदा जाने के कब आए ये दिन और ये बहार मिलते अहमद की मालिक ने जो डाली थी बिना रकमुल्ला ब्रदा बशीर अहमद साहब कैन आई रिक्वेस्ट मौलाना साहब प्लीज कैन यू ट्रांसलेट दैट नजम फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ द ऑडियंस डो नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द वेडिंग्स Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, by the instruction of the chairman i will present the english translation of uh, the couplets recited before you from a poem of the promised messiah lasallatu wassalam who is the holy founder of ahmadiyya muslim community uh, the first couplet reads that the foundation led by almighty allah almighty god of uh, the nation of hazrat ahmad the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's being uh, completed today or we see its uh, fruition today i mean in the time in this age which is a second phase of uh, the victory of islam or spread of islam then he writes that in the garden of ahmad that is the ahmadiyya muslim community is now the abode of uh, the pleasant breeze and this due to this i mean the the message he brought the promised messiah alayhi salatu wasalam brought okay one can win nearness to almighty god or nearness of almighty god and may have communion with almighty god by following his message that is the true teachings of the holy quran and then he talks about himself that there was a time i mean the promised messiah the holy founder of the ahmadiyya muslim community writes that there was a time that my name was not known to anyone because it belonged to a tiny hamlet of qadian in remote india or part of india remote part of india and even this town my town qadian was not known to anyone as if it was hidden in a cave and then he writes there was no one aware of me or nobody knew me and nor was my there was anyone my follower but now you see that multitudes have joined my fold and my name has reached the corners of the earth and then he gives message to to his contemporaries and people who will come in later times that if you want to find true comfort and peace you will have to come to this garden the garden of true islam which is known as ahmadiyya muslim community and now he says is the time and you should hurry to join this community and he says that after god has chosen him as the prophet of the age the world is experiencing that one is having communion with almighty allah after a lapse of ages or after a lapse of centuries and nobody knows when this time will return i mean a time when a prophet is raised a person a righteous person is chosen by almighty god to give guidance to mankind thank you very much zakum la mona saham 
and debt to immensely for your elaborate explanation. For without that, people would have gone without such a meaningful poem. The meaning of such a meaningful poem. Jazakumullah. With these words, we have the opening address by um, Brother Muhammad Iqbal Sahab, who is the national president of the Jamaat, Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, uh, New Zealand. May I request Brother Muhammad Iqbal Sahab to come on the stage, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa adhu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim In the Holy Quran in chapter 24, verse 56, as was earlier recited at the uh, opening of this session, the Holy Quran reads, Allah has promised to those among you who believe and do good works that he will surely make them successes in the earth as he made successes from among those who were before them and that he will surely establish for them their religion which he has chosen for them. And he will surely give them in exchange security and peace after their fear. They will worship me and they will not associate anything with me. Then whoso is ungrateful after that, they will be the rebellious. Respected chairperson for the session, fellow members of the Jamaat, it is only through Allah's grace that we have gathered here today on the occasion of the 27th Jalsa Salana, New Zealand. It is indeed a great blessing of Allah that we have had once again this opportunity to gather in what has been already described as a divinely inspired annual convention. The theme for this year's Jalsa Salana is Khilafat. There is much said about Islam in the media today, about its state and what's going on in the Middle East particularly. Perceptions both positive and negative, are taking form or shape in people's mind. The topic of Khilafat is gaining international attention, and we in New Zealand have an extremely strong role to play in informing people about the need and the benefits of this divine institution in the context of the true teachings of Islam. However, before I go any further, I am most humbled to present to you a special message received from our most beloved Imam, Sayyidina Hazrat Amirul Mumineen Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah be his helper on the occasion of this 27th annual convention. Huzur writes, Dear members of Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat New Zealand, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I am very pleased that you are holding your National Jalsa Salana on 29th and 30th January 2016. It is my prayer. May Allah bless your Jalsa with great success and may all the participants gain immense spiritual benefit and countless blessings from this unique religious gathering. You should keep in mind the fact that the fundamental aim of the advent of the promised Messiah was to establish a community of believers who would establish a close relationship with Allah Almighty and make his worship the object of their lives. Thereby, by becoming a model of true Muslims, they would serve humanity and spread the qualities and excellences of Islam throughout the world. The Holy Quran has stated that the very object of life is to worship Allah and achieve nearness to him. This type of worship which the Holy Quran has taught is Salat, which is prayers. Thus, every Ahmadi should endeavor to safeguard his five daily prayers and offer them on time and in congregation. 
The promised Messiah has stated, I tell you again that if you wish to establish a true relationship with Allah, hold fast to Salat in such a way that your body and your tongue and your spiritual designs and emotions should all become embodiments of Salat. Malfuzat, Volume 1, page 170. <coughs> I also advise you on the importance of maintaining a close link and attachment to the divinely created institution of Khilafat Ahmadiyya. Remember that the task of Khilafat Ahmadiyya is to further the mission of the promised Messiah. Every Ahmadi pledges at the time of Bayt to abide by the conditions of Bayt and obey the Khalifa of the time in everything good. Therefore, you should remember that when Ahmadis pledge Bayt on the hand of Khalifatul Masih, it is also essential that they strive wholeheartedly to fulfill this pledge. If each member of the Jamaat were to sincerely follow the commands and directions given by Khalifatul Masih, the very best standards of obedience and unity would be established. As a result, many fresh avenues for the advancement and propagation of Islam and the service of humanity would be realized. It is also imperative that you respect the nizam e jamaat which is the administrative system of the Jamaat, which performs under the guidance of Khalifatul Masih, and always endeavors to, co and always endeavor to cooperate fully with the office holders in the implementation of programs and plans of the Jamaat. A further point I would like to mention is that you and your families should watch MTA in your own homes as much as possible and also encourage its viewing amongst, viewing amongst all members of the Jamaat as well. At the very least, you should designate a regular time each day to watch MTA when they are programs of your interest. Most importantly, you must develop a regular habit of watching and listening not only to my Friday sermons, but also my other addresses and speeches at various functions and meeting and events. By following this advice, you will not only increase your knowledge and teachings of Islam and Hamadiyat, but your faith will also be much reinforced and strengthened. Another very crucial point to remember is that the promised Messiah has said that there should be unity and consistency within our faith and our practice. This means that we should act upon what we believe in, and this is something I have spoken about on many occasions. Remember that only when our faiths and our deeds become one will we become an example for our future generations. Only when our actions mirror our beliefs will we walk upon the path which will lead to our success and will also prove to be a means of protecting the future of our children. If all the Ahmadis who are participating in the Jalsa follow my admonitions in a sincere and dedicated manner, a most beautiful atmosphere will be created, which will naturally attract sincere seekers of truth towards the bounties of Ahmadiyyat. Your exemplary behavior should not be a temporary display just only for this Jalsa period, but should continue thereafter and be a constant journey towards increased devoutness and piety. The promised Messiah has prayed as follows. I pray to Allah that he may be with all those who are coming to attend the Jalsa and that he may grant them great rewards and that he may show them mercy and his grace. O oh Allah, O oh you who are the greatest benefactor, the benevolent, the merciful, and the remover of hardship, do listen to all these prayers of mine and grant us victory over our opponents with great signs, for you have the power to whatever you will. Amin. May Allah bless your Jalsa Salana with great success and enable all of you to progress greatly in Taqwa, which is righteousness and spiritual improvement. Wassalam. Yours sincerely, Mizra Masroor Ahmed, Khalifatul Masil Khamis, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asr al Aziz. My most respected brothers and sisters, how fortunate are we to have received such a beautiful message from our beloved Khalifa on this august occasion. Today, the Muslim world is yearning for such a leader that unites the entire Ummah. In Muslim countries, the clerics aren't able to settle on who is fit to lead 
the community as they fight amongst themselves for power and position. The ISIS may claim to have a caliph who is appointed by themselves. But let me ask you, what standing and acceptance does that person have around the world? Instead of creating peace and order, the ISIS caliph has gone totally the other way to allow destruction, unrest, atrocities, and usurping of people's basic human rights to carry on. On the other hand, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, with the longest running Khilafat on earth, enjoyed by millions of Ahmadiyya Muslims around the world, continuously get admonition from their Khalifa on ways to restore peace and order and for their spiritual and worldly success. Under the guidance and Khilafat of, uh, leadership of Khilafat, we are spreading love, affection, and peace throughout the world. We are doing this because the promised Messiah has proved this to be true Islam. Allah has promised that he will always protect Islam, so there is, there is no doubt that he will turn hearts towards joining Ahmadiyyat and become true servants of the faith. With great agency, the promised Messiah said that if his community had not been founded, then there is no doubt that Islam would have been destroyed because of the wrong interpretation of Muslim clerics about Islam. I'll repeat that. With great agency, the promised Messiah has said, had said that if his community had not been founded, then there is no doubt that Islam would have been destroyed because of the wrong interpretation of Muslim clerics about Islam. In December 1905, the promised Messiah wrote a book called al Wasiyat, The Will, in which he recorded his last testimony to the Ahmadiyya community. It is to be remembered that this book was written three years before his demise. In, in it, he urged the community members to bring about a change for the better in their lives and to live up to the standard demanded by Islam. He also told them that on his departure from this world, God would send his second manifestation to the world. He instructed the community to be sympathetic towards each other and to get rid of their low passions. He further added, do not think that God will let you go to waste. You are the seed that God has planted with his own hands. God says that seed will grow and blossom and its branches will spread out to all directions and it will become a big tree. Blessed are those who believe in that, what God says, and do not fear the trials that come in between. The promised Messiah Islam further writes, whoever perseveres unto the last, witness this miracle as happened at the time of Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when the death of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam was considered to be untimely and many nomads turned apostates and the followers of the Prophet were unnerved by deep grief. At that critical hour, God made Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu stand up firmly, thus showing his powerful hand a second time. You should therefore neither grieve over what I have told you, that the hour of my demise is nigh nor should you be heartbroken, for it is mandatory that you see God's second manifestation. The coming of that manifestation is a lot better for you because it is eternal, whose succession will not terminate till the end of days. When I go, Allah will send to you the second manifestation and it will stay with you forever. al wasiyat pages six to seven. Just as Allah appoints a prophet, it is he who appoints a Khalifa as well. Khilafat establishes the authority of Allah on earth and the Khalifa strives to uphold the authority within the community of followers. For the believers, Khilafat is an embodiment of Allah's unity as they choose to take divine authority through the person of the Khalifa. The believers partake of the blessings of Khilafat by holding firm to their faith and practices united under him. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you, have we not seen the signs of Allah manifest in front of us? Is there any other Khilafat in the world today that has started after the demise 
of a prophet is foretold in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can anyone repudiate the claims of the promised Messiah as nonsense and fairy tales? Time and again, Allah the Almighty has come to honor his promise to the promised Messiah by manifesting signs that strengthen our faith. For those who sincerely strive for the truth are on a journey to gain nearness to Allah by trying to uplift their spiritual life. Allah has always shown his majestic signs for guidance. Today, Almighty Allah himself is guiding sincere hearts to Ahmadiyyat. Our missionary from Mali wrote that a person rang the Ahmadiyya mission house and said that he was an Ahmadi from that day and requested that his bath be taken. <clears throat> When he was asked why he wanted to take bath, he said due to the current state of Muslims in the world, he did not feel inclined to join any other sects. He said he read the Quran and Hadith and tried to follow it to the best of his ability and was convinced that God would not leave Islam in the current state and would definitely send Imam Mahdi. He prayed for this. That very night, after praying, when he went to bed, he saw a dream in which the moon comes down from the sky and towards the earth, so much so that it lands on the person's hand and, it comes, and from it comes the sound that Imam Mahdi has come. The person then remarked, Is that not what Ahmadiyya Radio broadcasts and calls on people and tells them that the Messiah has come? Indeed, the Messiah has come, he added that he had no doubt left in his mind and he decided to take bath. Our missionary from Sierra Leone writes that there was just one Ahmadi Jamaat in a far-flung place in Kanama region. In the adjoining village to where the Jamaat is established, a young man of good morals was being crowned according to local tradition. The young man says that night when he was crowned, he had a dream. He saw that there is a small mosque and a large mosque, and he wishes to go to the large mosque for prayers. A voice tells him that if he wishes his prayers to be accepted, and if he wishes to have a connection with God, he should go to the small mosque. He goes to the small mosque and sees his father sitting in there. He tells his son, this is the mosque of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. If you want to have a connection with God, you should only come to this mosque for your prayers. He says he did not know anything about the Jamaat prior to this dream, so he asked people of the surrounding areas if there was an Ahmadiyya mosque around there. Someone pointed it out to him. The young man got in touch with our Muallim, who is a teacher, at the mosque and took bath. In my recent travel to Pakistan, I met a young man who is the only Ahmadi convert in his family. Naturally, I was intrigued to find out more what led him towards accepting Ahmadiyyat. Because as you know, in countries like Pakistan, there is a huge backlash, not only from the community, but the wider community, when someone accepts Ahmadiyyat. So, being intrigued, I asked him how he came towards Ahmadiyyat. He told me that for years he had enjoyed good company of Ahmadi Muslims, but he had no intention to accept Ahmadiyyat. Even when his friends would ask him to consider Jamaat as a Jamaat of Allah and to join the fold, he would remain quiet in that he was dismissing the idea of taking bath. However, the great thing is that this person had seen Ahmadis firsthand and had realized that they were very humble people and were only interested in connecting with God and creating that relationship and making it much more stronger. So he dismissed, dismissed the idea every time he was encouraged and invited to consider Jamaat as the Jamaat that he would like to join. One day one of his Ahmadi friends said that if you really love the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam so much that you want to fulfill and obey all his instructions. Then one of his instructions to also bear in mind is that according to a hadith, a saying of the Holy Prophet Muhammad that in the later days 
when the promised Messiah comes, even if you have to crawl on snow to go and give him my salam, you must make sure you don't go and do that. This person said, this particular hadith had an effect on his heart. And in that, whilst he was not fully convinced to accept Ahmadiyya, he started praying fervently to Allah to show him the right path. And he started begging for uh, guidance. Within a very short passage of time, this young man tells me that he was so blessed that he had the opportunity to see a dream. In that dream, he sees the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, standing, and next to him is our fourth Khalif, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed. Naturally, he said, when I see this um, dream and the Holy Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, I start running towards the Holy Prophet. And he said, at my running, the Holy Prophet وسلم, told me to go towards Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed because he is the only one to save you and bring you into the proper fold of Islam. Allah blessed him so much with courage and fortitude that he decided to take bath the very next day. He went to Rabwa and he accepted bath. At this, at this point in time, he had not told his wife anything about the dream or his intentions and he actually went and uh, took bath. Now in Pakistan we will know from those who are familiar with the culture we have extended family living together. So the uncles and aunts and parents, brothers and sisters, they all live in very close proximity. So naturally there is a very great influence on what the family thinks, on how you act and behave and what you practice. This man said he did not care anything about it and he was absolutely ready to be thrown out of the family and he was prepared to um, make his own way towards a place where he could practice Ahmadiyyat freely. When he went home, he told his wife what he had dreamt the night before. Without a question, his wife also decided to take bath. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the faith that Ahmadiyyat instills in our hearts. And for those hearts that turn for the good and convert towards Ahmadiyyat, there is a great reward for, for them. And the peace that they will find in the spiritual journey they embark on by joining Ahmadiyyat will be never ending. And on a day by day basis, as we progress, we will find that not, not only our faith strengthens, but also our bond with Khilafat strengthens over time. My respectable brothers and sisters, how fortunate are we to be in the Jamaat chosen by Allah? Ahmadis around the world were blessed, are blessed with the institution of Khilafat which has continuously guided us and guided our community. Those who truly love Allah make every effort to do so on a daily basis and aspire to reach higher heights. It is our duty as followers of the promised Messiah to defend Islam from those who seek to destroy it. Unfortunate are those who even after hearing the call of the promised Messiah are bereft of accepting him. Certainly the opponents of Islam will never be successful, inshallah, because Allah has promised himself to protect the name of Islam. Nevertheless, we all must be at the forefront of Islam's true teachings. We must prove that we are living ambassadors of peace and beacons of the true teachings of Islam. No Ahmadi Muslim ever needs to become a victim of any form of inferiority complex because we have reason logic, evidence, and above all, the truth on our side. And we also have the great gift of God that we have Khilafat that continuously admonishes us towards a path that strengthens our relationship with Allah. Always remember that we should be grateful to Allah and our gratitude to Allah alone. This entails following his commands and enhancing our relationship with the Nizam and also Khilafat. In closing for blessings, I would like to read two excerpts from the Promised Messiah regarding this Jalsa. Hazrat Agdas Masih Wasalam writes, It is essential for all those who can afford to undertake the journey that they must attend this convention which embodies many blessed objectives. They should disregard minor inconveniences in the cause of Allah and His Prophet Allah yields reward to the sincere persons at every step of their way. 
and no labor and hardship undertaken is in his way ever goes to waste. <clears throat> I re-emphasize that you must not rank this convention in the same league as other ordinary human assemblies. This is a phenomena that is based purely on the divine help for propagation of Islam. I conclude with the prayer that everyone who travels for attending this convention and is only for the sake of Allah, may Allah the Exalted be with him, reward him in abundant measure, have mercy on him, ease up for him his circumstances of hardship and anxiety, and eliminate his anguish and grief. May he grant him freedom from every single hardship and lay open for him the ways of achieving his cherished goals. And raise him up on the day of judgment among those of his servants who are the recipients of his blessing and mercy. May he be their guardian in their absence until after their journey comes to an end. Please continue to pray for the success of this Jalsa and make all efforts to attend all the sessions that have been uh, planned for this Jalsa Salana so that we can reap the maximum blessings of Allah. May Allah the Almighty shower his choicest of blessings on this Jalsa and all the attendees and all the volunteers. May the next two days of this Jalsa be filled with God's mercy and blessings. May Allah fill our hearts with the true love of Khilafat and make us steadfast in his obedience. May Allah accept our humble dua. Jazakumullah asnil jazaam. Jazakumullah Sadr Sahib for your heart-touching opening address. Sadr Sahib has said, the holy, uh, quoted from the Holy Quran, the coming of the successes. And also he read the message of uh, Khalifatul Masih Ayyotala bin Asri Aziz that the true message of Islam is to achieve the nearness of Allah and save humanity. He has also, the Huzur has also said, hold fast the rope of Salat, attached to the, attached to the Khilafat. Follow the administration of the Jamaat and follow the office holders of the Jamaat. Watch the MTA to strengthen your faith and be a model Ahmadi. He drew a comparison between the true Khilafat and ISIS Caliph. It, 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 it's, if Ahmadiyyad would not have come, then certainly the demise of Islam would have been seen. God has saved Islam through Ahmadiyyad. He has also quoted some examples of people who accepted Ahmadiyyad and the circumstances that led them to doors of Ahmadiyyad. With these words, we have. Can I? Uh, I request Morana Mustansir Aikamar Sahab uh, for a speech on establishment, establishing oneness of God. Can I request Morana Kamar Sahab to come along, please? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ولقد بعثنا في كل